mean, uh, back here on Tuesday, and I thought these guys, I thought our guys did a really good job. Tuesdays can sometimes be tough. You're putting in some new things, you know, new opponent, and you're kind of installing. You do some base stuff yesterday, but today's the bulk of it. So I thought our guys handled it really well. Uh, the key will be sustaining it through the week, though, because I think I said that last week. Uh, bad Tuesdays and one ball games, and I've seen great Tuesdays that don't, you know, so I don't get too high, too low, but I was very happy with uh, how we started today. When you watch tape of Washington, they got a lot of new guys on defense. They've been awfully good for a long time. What are you seeing from them now? They'll be good again. I mean, that's the reality. They'll be very good again. Extremely well coached. They have talent that comes in and replaces talent that left, and uh, it'll be a challenge, no question. They're a good team. Is there anything in particular you notice that's special? Uh, yeah, a lot of guys on D at every level. There's some guys that uh, do some special things. Uh, 95 stands out to me. I mean, on the you know, and that's not taking away from any other D lineman, but 95 stands out. He does a lot of great things. Backers play. You know, I know it's relatively new group, but they they play their tails off, and you saw it in that game one. And then uh, you know, five on the back end's been a really good player. Three, he's got some stuff. You know, we played against 27. You know, he's long. I'm a numbers guy, so that's how he you know look at it. But played against 27 in the past. He's long and rangy. So yeah, it's definitely we're gonna have our hands full. You guys had almost 500 yards of offense on on Saturday, but also the three offensive turnovers. How do you evaluate both the good and the bad? Yeah, I mean, I I think the standard has to be you know towards that. You talk about the the yard. I mean, I'm not even worried about it. honestly total yards. Really, is I think it's sometimes an irrelevant stat. The stat that you brought up is is what wins you and loses you ball games. So that's how I evaluate it. You know, the the three turnovers is what you know in, in a lot of situations you may not most likely you won't come out with a win. You know, especially if you lose the turnover battle, you know, but fortunately, you know, you, we did a study and it's turnovers and chunk plays that are the biggest difference. Turnovers and chunk plays. And that's where we offset it a little bit with our eight chunk plays, you know, and compared to their whatever it was, two or three chunk plays that helped to kind of probably bring it closer together. But it was a close game for a long time and uh, give UC Davis credit. You know, they create things and they did a great job and that's a really well coached team and a good football team. And uh, it took us getting over the hump with some early mistakes to kind of get, get going a little bit. Ran Chris 36 times on Saturday. Is that something you want to limit more of or rotate Dancy? Or we'll see. I team? mean, obviously, I mean, you don't expect it to be every game 36 times. It was what it was in that game. And you had a two score lead late and uh, you know, and you're kind of finish it, and you're looking for a little rhythm at times. So, and he provided that. You know, just you know, running through some tackles and doing some things. But, but no, you wouldn't expect him to have over 400 carries on a 12 game season. I agree. Um, so it's it's good. We're going to take all. You know, everyone in that running back room is going to, you know, continue to add add to what we're doing offensively. He did have 14 carries in the fourth quarter. How impressive was that? Really impressive. You know, and I was I was I was I was very encouraged by one thing. I think we had the ball for almost 12 minutes in the fourth quarter, but I was not happy with we didn't put that you know last piece in you know in terms of that last touchdown to go up by three scores or even field goal to go up by 17. so that was the positive side he carried the ball we carried that we took care of you know we we held the ball you know for a long part of that fourth quarter the negative side is we didn't punch it in when we got the chance we had a turnover down there and i think we uh we didn't give our field goal kicker you know we, we forced him into a long one when it didn't need to be we could have gotten a little bit more they've been very good against the run for mm -hmm. a few years now. Mm -hmm. How important is it for you to be able to establish you know, something with your run game against them? Oh, it's always important. I think that's important in almost every game. Doesn't mean you're going to be completely balanced every game. There are some games where you might lean on the pass more, and, and uh, certain situations call for it, certain ways, you know, strengths and weaknesses of any defense. Um, but to go in to any game without some you know, some level of both sides, you, it's, it's vital in my opinion. Um, but. Uh, you know how the game plays out. We'll see. Chase had the, the two early turnovers. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. He didn't really look on the fumble whether or not he could have protected him because he was chased from behind. But then he comes back later on the first touchdown where he's really showing a lot of patience. <clears throat> right. Wait, you know, waiting for the, the read to come open and he makes the throw. Right. What were your evaluation of his game and, and just kind of where is he to, to again that that. That play just really, I thought, stood out just how, how calm and right. relaxed he seemed back there. No, he was. And really, it was only one because the late turnover is actually, the fumble is actually in the fourth quarter. Oh, my goodness. So, no, it's okay. No, it's all right. But he did have the one turnover early, and, right. and we missed on a couple things early. So, you do have to get over sometimes. I think they asked me that last week. How important is to have a fast start? Well, you always want it, but you don't want to act like if you don't have a fast start, oh, no, it's the world's in, and you got to come back and, and, and just keep grinding and, and uh, you know, find ways to make adjustments. And that's what he was able to do. We were able to see some things they were doing that maybe was a little different than on film. 
we were able to kind of get rolling, and I think we ended up, you know, scoring five out of six drives, led led by Chase in the second and third quarter, and he just stayed calm with it all. And he'll be the first to tell you, though, you know, in terms of his grades and the standard he played at, he, he's going to take it to a whole another standard. It's it's not where we believe, you know, it it should be or will be. How important is it to, to have that that running game? to enable him to just kind of be in that relaxed mode to not have everything on his shoulders, you know, if you guys didn't have that threat of a run. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, I think that's big for almost any quarterback. I mean, maybe certain unique offenses are, are throwing it like crazy and it's not. But even those offenses, most of the time, there's some level of running game when they need it. Um, you know, but with our offense and, and what we're doing and having a guy like Chris, you're going to be, you know, about, you know, pretty balanced. Doesn't mean every game is going to be balanced, but, uh, when you are balanced, when you're able to do it effectively, it's going to make things, it's going to open up guys like a couple of those guys were wide open, like the first touchdown. You know, the running game helps to open that up and the protection. The guys up front did a great job. I wanted to ask about that left side of the offensive line, which is a younger duo with uh, Craig and Sindrick. How'd you feel they did? I think it was their first start for each of them. Yeah, no, no, Will had started before. Okay. Yeah, but Sindrick, yes, you're right. It was his first, and uh, they did a great job. I mean, at the end of the day, we were able to, you know, we didn't, we didn't have a ton of sacks. We were, and I can't remember. Maybe the one, you know, maybe there was a second. I didn't really pay it too much attention. To exact that exact number, but it didn't feel. It felt like so often Garbs had a lot of time, and then obviously we were able to run for a, you know, a high yards per carry. You know, especially if you're just talking about the running backs yards per carry. So when it comes down to it, that all comes down to the entire line, tight ends, and and our our receivers did a really good job on the perimeter blocking too to help some of those chunk run plays. You had the one drop, but how did the tight ends do other than uh, other than that? Uh, how that position did a good job and they're young you know I mean those guys haven't played a lot of ball so um, a couple of them really their first action I mean Cali played a little last year but you know it was it was just a spot here and there so you know most extensive action any any of them have even going back to Gavin's freshman year where he was used almost more as a receiver you know and now he's playing true tight end so I, I was you know, uh, that group that group's a good group that's working their their tails off and uh, they're going to continue to as ascend as the season goes. I think I think that's the type of group that you're going to see as much growth as any other position because of their youth and their want to, and and uh, you know it's a it's a really good room that way. Without tipping your hand too much with regards to depth chart, do you mm -hmm. anticipate giving Kako Crawford more of a run maybe in the starting room? We'll see. I mean, it's like I said, it's just one of those things where we looked in at last game, it could have just as easily been any one of those five you know, guys that played on the outside with a couple touchdowns. Now, I give Koa credit. He made the plays when they came his way, but we're going to need all of them. So how that plays out, you know, it's kind of up to them. You know, tell them that. You know, who plays the most, who gets the most reps, who's out there, you know, at, at certain moments. It's, it's up to you guys. You know, we have to, we're going to evaluate everything you're doing, you know, every day in practice. And uh, But chances are throughout the course of the season, all five, and then you got Monroe possibly coming back. I mean, you just, you got a, you got a really good depth at that position. Chase threw over, I think it was 16 out of 28, or uh, farther than 10 yards downfield. How do you like how he's kind of adjusted his eyes from last year? Yeah, I like what we're doing, you know, and sometimes your percentages might go down a little bit, you know, but you got to take the good with the bad that way and know that we want to be able to push it downfield because that's the other thing that opens up the run game. You know, the run game helps open up the pass game, but when you push it downfield and we show people you're going to push it downfield, that helps then open up the underneath stuff in the run game. So we have to do a better job of that. That's been a big emphasis. I know we've talked about it here in the offseason. And, uh, you know, it held true in that game in terms of yards per attempt and yards per completion. But he'll be the first to tell you, and I, we still left a lot on the table. You know, we missed on a couple things, and, and uh, there are things we're, we're going to continue to get better at. And uh, cause there's, a, there's a high standard and a high belief where, you know, where we can be as we, as we keep growing through the season. We wobbled a couple passes there. Is that just footwork? or? I mean, sometimes, you know, I mean, sometimes it comes out of your hand funny. Gotcha. I mean, you, Peyton Manning wobbled balls. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'm not, it, it just does. There's sometimes there's no, I mean, it, you can assess it to certain things, but sometimes some quarterbacks have more of a wobble and some, throw a tight spiral all the time, but I care that it's on time and it's where it needs to be, and that's when that's not happening, that's what I'm more focused on. Well, how, much, how much freedom do you give Chase in the line of scrimmages? Are, are there 
Do you have autonomy to do what he wants when he you know, gets there? Yeah. Or are there automatic checks for him to go into? Or? Yeah, there's. he's getting more and more. You know, more and more as we go. Yeah. You know, definitely more than as, and, and as well as should be. I mean, as a freshman, you almost don't want to right. That's kind put of all that on him. Not that he, I wouldn't try, I mean, he was ahead of the curve, you know, mentally as a freshman playing last year, redshirt freshman. And, uh, you know, so to be where he is now, I can give him, I can, he can handle about anything I want to give him. At least anything I've ever given QBs in terms of that, he can handle it. It's just a matter of how much do you really want to give him, because you also don't want him thinking too much. Mm -hmm. Did you want to be able to let him play? Did you kind of have to, for lack of a better phrase, nurse him through last year in regards to that? Or was that something you saw early on that you could you could give him that kind of? Thing? No, you knew you could give him. I mean, Tui set at a great foundation with where that guy was mentally. I mean, he's he's at a spot even as a true freshman when he first got here. And you know, and, and working in the QB room with, with Tui and those guys, that that he 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 got it to a level where, you know, he, he he knows things before you even talk about things in terms of redirecting protections or safety rotation or you know displacement of a linebacker. So, um, yeah, that's uh, there was no no having to nurse anything. It was just a matter, honestly, of just getting him more and more comfortable with our offense, you know, and what we do, and and uh, and just when are the right times to maybe check something or change something. And, why we do it and, and some of those things just and that comes naturally with playing. Where have you seen him make the biggest leap from the guy who left here at the end of the season last mm -hmm. year to the guy who showed up here and started training? He, he just has a command of all the little pieces of the offense. He has a command of every receiver split. He has a command of you know tempo and huddle and, and just all the procedures that go with it. And he has a great I think you know relationship. He's developing a relationship with the guys and a confidence with each other. You know, and, and, and you see that. Not that it wasn't before, but as a freshman, sometimes you're in your world just trying to focus on you, and now he's putting himself out there and, and developing that bond. And that, you know, that, you know, he's not a captain, but I think he's on his way to that type of, you know, he has that type of mentality and that to see type guys of gravitate mm -hmm. towards him. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch that growth. And then he has, a, you know, just a growth because he feels more and more comfortable in the offense. I think he, he can develop a more aggressive attitude within the offense, too. And that was kind of the you know, question that was asked earlier. All right. Thanks. 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 Appreciate it.